Welcome, adventurers, to Probability of Demise, the podcast where critical fumbles meet critical face palms. Join us as we delve into the darkest dungeons, slay the stupidest gremlins, and roll enough ones to make a beholder weep. Forget epic storylines and heroic deeds. Here we celebrate the chaotic beauty of bad rolls, questionable decisions, and characters with more charisma than sense. We'll be your dungeon masters of disappointment, guiding you through campaigns where the only guaranteed treasure is a mountain of laughter and maybe some psychic scarring. So grab your Nat One dice, strap on your anxiety helmets, and prepare to witness the glorious train wreck that is our D&D journey. Because, in the end, even if your character dies face first into a pile of pudding, at least you'll have the dice god's permission to laugh your ass off. Welcome to Probability of Demise, new campaign! Hey! We've changed our format a little bit, and we're about to start it with just doing it! Yes. Word of the day! Oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> okay. This segment is all Jess. She's, whole, she's, all she's, she's reformatted her format. I currently have a list of, thus far, 100 words. We are going to... I am going to roll this magical D100, <laughs> and whatever it lands on will be the word we are choosing to learn about today. So here we go. I need to do this on the floor because it's very loud. Excuse me. <laughs> and you won't believe what we landed on, folks. 100! <laughs> it's a good sign for our new campaign. Lucky. So today's word of the day is... I just had a little bit of a question while you're looking for this word, and you don't have okay. to do anything, but like, did is your 100 words the ones that are the hardest for you to pronounce, or the ones the hardest for you to pronounce? Neither. <laughs> it's all completely <laughs> random. Flabbled. Wait, what uh, was that word? Okay. <laughs> Flibbly flabbled is number, number 61. <laughs> These are true words, folks. All right. As opposed to false words. <laughs> Today's word of the day, number 100, is salient, which is most noticeable or important. And using this in a sentence, the salient points of the argument were emphasized to drive home the key message. That was your word of the day. Thank you. Brought to you Thank by you. this D100. <laughs> and the floor. Normally, what would follow the floor. up right after that would be our recap of the previous session. But as this is our first session of this new campaign, <laughs> new season, new us, what we're going to do instead is we're going to just really quickly go around and introduce ourselves. And I don't want to be the first one to start. So someone else, take it away. <laughs> I'll go. We'll go Clarissa top volunteers. Top round. She is the tribute. <laughs> <laughs> volunteers tribute. Um my name is Larissa McDowell. I met these lovely people. On the top. Yes, the person next to me on top is my partner. And I've known him for far longer. But Rurik and Jess, I met playing Dungeons and Dragons in a randomized group finder event at a local gaming store in March of 2020. And the rest, as they say, is history. But uh... The world shut down at, the... <laughs> yes. at our first game. <laughs> well, New York shut down at our first yes. game. Yes, yes. But the D&D continued. So personally, singer, actor, living in New York, I have another full-time nine-to-five that pays the bills. But I think my goal with this campaign is to bring uh, local theater projects to the forefront. So today's group that I would like to introduce you to is Broadway Bonds. They are a 501c3 nonprofit and they're a New York based theater project that aims to provide opportunities for performers living in larger bodies. They, their goal is to create safe, inclusive spaces for performers of diverse bodies as a top priority of the organization. So as a, in, you know, curvy person. I heavily believe in changing the Broadway industry as it stands now. And so I think you should be able to sing the part, but you don't need to look the part necessarily, or at least any certain way 
to be able to play a part. As long as you can sing it and act it, you should be able to do it. So yeah, so that's me and that's Broadway Bods. You can find out more information about them at broadwaybods.com. And I believe their spring uh, production is You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown coming up in March or April. So stay tuned and I'll give you an exact date when once I know that. I would like to audition for the role of Snoopy. Be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got the fur. You're fine. Hi, I'm Jason, and I would like to audition for the role. No, I don't have anything nearly so interesting to say. I am a aspiring writer living in New York with the other person in the top row who is my spouse, and I am very adept at swear words and shaming people on Facebook for being dumb. No, I don't know. I got, I got nothing. Yeah. So I am looking forward to campaign two and I will pass it down to Jess. Hi, <laughs> I am Jessica Becker. I live in New York where I've met these amazing folks. I'm also in the arts, do a lot of musical theater, have currently have a nine to five job, you know, love things all anime nerdum so if you ever have any suggestions for things i'm always looking so make sure to comment yeah that's thus far me <laughs> awesome and i am rurik i am the gm for this session for this game for this campaign for yeah i'm having fun with these folks i play all the npcs and sewer rats I think I put a different descriptor in the Discord for our friends. <laughs> but trash. Uh, sewer trash. Yes, I play the sewer trash. And I am super into how D&D has like reinvigorated my creative space a bit. And I've been getting able been getting into world building again. And I'm always available if you want to chat about world building, character background building, other things like that, because those are super fun and exciting things for me to be doing. In my daytime life, I just write curriculum. So if you want to be a writer, you apparently you can be a marketer or a <laughs> curriculum writer. <laughs> yeah. th th those are jobs out there. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with our return to Atland. When you look around the spaces and places of Overton and Underton, Things have changed quite a bit. The people have changed. The sheer amount of magic has changed. And the overall world has changed. Overton is truly, truly different. It was once a united bastion of magic and innovation, but now it's a city that is fractured. Its skyline is a dizzying tableau of opulence and neglect. There are sleek, crystalline sky citadels, playgrounds of the ascended and their sycophants, piercing the clouds and casting shadows upon those who eke out an existence precariously on cliff sides and the flatlands of Overton itself. Makeshift homes are cobbled together from scavenged magitech and enchanted debris. In one of these spaces, clawing onto the cliffside through heavy chains and yet somehow still defying gravity with enchanted anchors, is a neighborhood called the Cragside Crowds. Here, a vibrant tapestry of beings eke out a living as the magic that floats their homes slowly ebbs and flows. Street vendors hawk enchanted trinkets and potions. You hear the rhythmic clam of, clang of hammers and the hiss of steam from alchemical concoctions. And all of these cries blend into the cacophony of haggling crowds and children adorned with bioluminescent tattoos weaving between legs pockets filled with pilfered trinket. This is a place of resilience and ingenuity built from necessity. It's considered pretty well-to-do by Overton standards. Here in this neighborhood, there exists a little tucked away, this local tavern slash art gallery, of course, located in the Cragside Crowds, 
is somewhat of a safe haven for one of our first people that we'd like to meet. So here in Celia's Shell Shied Spirits and Sundries, designed to torture me, so good. <laughs> is set one of the more quiet places facing the crystal cliffs. The facade is fairly plain, except for a string of lanterns that alternate colors cheerfully but somewhat lazily. A sign above the door, shaped in a snail shell, shows a painting of an overflowing mug of beer sitting on an easel at the center. As we go into this space, uh, would you like to describe yourself and the location you're within? All right. As you enter, there's a bar down the right side length and across from it are communal tables that jut out from the left side. And the room seems to kind of almost enforce perspective, go towards a stage at the very back of the room. The lighting is very limited, predominantly to allow the stage to have as much natural lighting as possible. At one of those communal tables, you'll see someone wearing an unassuming overcloak with the hood pulled up but as she moves you know to to take a sip of her wine and you know maybe reach across the table for some salt you see a flash of bright red satin silk touches of gold touches of purple but only only the quickest of glances. As you, you are sitting there, enjoying your drink, taking your time over your beverages, you hear a whisper of paper and a piece of parchment appears just under your hand. I just cast a quick sidelong glance to see if I noticed who it is that slipped that there, just to make sure for my own. Roll our uh, first roll. Eee! Perception check. All right. My dice are ready, but my pomegranate is sitting on it. So hang on. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know. So pushy. Pomegranate season? They are in season right now, I think, actually. It is pomegranate season. It's not bougie to eat a pomegranate. It's only bougie Ooh. to know when pomegranate season is. Ooh. Ooh, 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 that is in dirty 20. You don't catch them in time. Ooh, sneaky. The fact that they snuck up to you is kind of a surprise. You do catch just sight of someone slipping out the window, small in stature, and a blue tattoo at their wrist as that's the last thing you see as they let go mm. at a window that you know drops over nothing. Interesting. I... <clears throat> take up the note and I read it. Yeah, it's, that's not my uh, actual accent. I'm just, being, I'm just being extra. It is written as these are usually written for you. These missives, these requests for services. This is asking for a personal favor. It comes from a client, not for your advertised services, but for those services that are less advertised and reading through the and decoding the script of this, you come to understand that this would be a very different type of request. It's not <coughs> one of your typical things. I would love for you, since you're holding this note, to roll an investigation check. Investigation! <laughs> I, didn't make an, I didn't make an audio for that. <laughs> oh, no. Why am I muted? I was trying to say it can never have a pre-recorded sound because it must be in the moment true emotions. True improv, yes. That is a total of four. Oh, I miss Trixie already. <laughs> you note that the note has been well creased in the proper ways and it looks like there's a bit of a smudge somewhere but none of your business really. <laughs> I I lean back and I just kind of over my shoulder I go CC I need to settle up I got places to be I got you honey I have to say the stew was particularly good today did we add enough saffron 
Yes, and the sage just really complimented it. So, mwah, my compliments. All right, we got you. Hey, you coming for the gallery opening, right? Of course. I think I think the Craig side was it Craig side crowds. Craig side crowds might be like Red Hook. I'm not sure from the accent. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe there's a lot to play. <laughs> Okay, as you head on out, I'm going to shift our camera angles. A different location, different place. The sounds up above are very similar, but they are coming from up above. Uh, there's the clangs, there's the hawking of wares, but there's an intensity here that is not the same as it is in other places. and. Here in the Whispering Bazaar, bustling marketplace where there's whispers of ancient artifacts and enchanted goods are just there and available to be purchased. We can hear the voice of Kasim as he's yelling out at various passerbys trying to get, garner their attention, but it's a little muffled. It's a little muffled because his stall is open it's an open stall, just like most of the stalls in the Whispering Bazaar. Below, he does have a basement. A basement that he sublet to our friend Jess. Would you describe yourself and this location that you're in and give us your character's name? All right. So, I guess sort of envisioning as this camera is coming in, you see a very dimly lit, dusty basement with lots of gears whirling and some what maybe look like potions or weird vials bubbling you see a someone hunched over a table hair wild pulled back very curly bright white with some pink ends just someone going about mumbling under their breath a few curse words here and there things being thrown and grabbed as you see this bright green tiefling who is constantly trying to get her unkept hair out of her face, out of her three sets of horns that sort of go around her face with these big goggles with many little magnifying glasses on as she's working on her most recent invention as she inspires to be one of the best artific artificers around. And this is young Serafina. Serafina, what have you been working on on this day? What has you in the Right now, she's trying to figure out a new tool that, that she hasn't fully thought of, thought through all the way. Part of her process is to just start grabbing things and putting them together to see what she makes, to see how she can make that thing work. She never truly goes in with a plan. She sort of develops as she goes. And this is evident in your workshop. As you look around, there are some interesting magical items about. There's a broom in the corner. You named it the broom of stubborn sweeping because it keeps cleaning the same spot over and over again, regardless of how clean it actually is. There are some a little bit more useful tools like the Amulet of Awkward Compliments. You can always grant, you're granted when wearing it, the ability to compliment enemies with uncomfortable precision. And then of course you have the most famous item of all, the bag of mismatched socks. Um, every time you reach in, you pull out a random odd sock. You do have a individual who's very interested in purchasing this. Um, Kasim has connected you with a, a um, goblin who is super excited about the fashion possibilities of constantly wearing mismatched socks. As you are sitting there with your latest creation, what sort of components are out on the table? A lot of, a lot of gears, a lot of small metal bits that fling out whenever you maybe pr push something or pull something, a new thing flings out. So there's a lot of maybe sharp little objects in this compact 
little device. As you are sitting there, you hear a stomp on the trap door that is the the way in which you can both find egress and entrance to your space. And Kasim's voice comes down as he lifts the heavy doors. A message for you, Serafina. You down there? She doesn't answer right at first. She's still just... <laughs> No, 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 no. God damn it, girl! <sighs> Serafina! What? What? Huh? Yeah. Yeah? Are you playing with those runes again? What? Uh, uh, not right now. I was, uh, but not now. Keep up the good work, but uh, there's a note. And you see a long, taloned hand reaching down with a bit of parchment clumsily clasped in it. Kasim is... One of the reasons why Kasim has given you this space is Kasim is no longer able to get up and down the ladder. It is no longer a useful space for him. He has reached the age where traversing such things is more work than he's willing to put in. He shakes the piece of parchment again. Here! Oh, okay, here. I, here. I stumble off my stool, you know, things falling out of my lap that I didn't even realize were in my lap. <laughs> clang, 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 clang running over to grab it, you know, trying to find a bit of light from somewhere to, like, read the note. In this dim space, looking at this note, opening it up, you hear Kasim slammed back down the trapdoor. It's a request for your other work. Not work with your family, per se, but work that your a member of your family did perform. It is a request from someone that you have heard about a lot in the city. You've done a couple of things that were tangentially connected. And really, it's the signature at the bottom that gets your attention. It's, you see Sticky Beak scrawled hastily at the bottom. And it's a request for your help with a case he cannot devote his attention to, but which is dear to his heart. Serafina just kind of goes, <sighs> Looking at it. You can see that the request is to go to the Skylark Theater. And there isn't really a time on it, but as you kind of inspect the note, could I have you roll our second investigation check? <laughs> the full mouth investigation is a little different. Let's see. Investigation. Okay. That's if a Muppet was singing it. <laughs> the Muppet uh, 24 12. despite the terrible lighting despite the you know what you're doing you know this and you, you look at this it was folded in the shape of a bird and you know that that means that this is an urgent request uh. with a 24 you also notice uncharacteristic of Sticky Beak the way in which the note was scrawled is both in haste and something more i am going to put that fold it up put it in my pocket go over to my table take the little device i was working on a couple little gears a couple little things shove them in different pockets as i'm gonna head upstairs to head out not waste any time you head out, our camera zips back up to the overview of Overton, and now it goes to the side of Overton that's always shadowed by the Cragside crowds. That huge neighborhood that barely holds itself aloft covers this neighborhood day in and day out. This is literally under the Cragside crowds and called the Undercroft. There are things deeper, most notably Underton, but... The Undercroft is a location where truly the most disenfranchised live. It's shadowed by those Craigside crowds, hidden amidst abandoned workshops and forgotten tunnels. There's actually a community here, a community of outcasts who prefer to exist in the shadows. There are skilled pickpockets and cunning informants mingling with disillusioned mages and artists seeking anonymity. And... In this location, there is a small door to a very large space. This is the starving artist. On the first floor, art supplies. On the second floor, foods and libations of interesting options. 
Jason. Hello. Can you describe what you're up to in this space and what you're doing? Yeah. So yeah, as you mentioned, downstairs, there's like art supplies. And then like over to one side, there's like this rickety kind of questionable staircase that goes up. And then like, as you, as you come into this tavern area, that's upstairs, you see like a tall, handsome human in his thirties flecked with paint. He's surrounded by fans and potential customers and maybe some of his friends. And then as you walk past that guy, you see a short little gnome, a deep gnome. He's got like dark, kind of almost black skin. He's got like a kind of a long white beard. And he's sort of sometimes easier to spot in a crowd because he wears a, what's called a deerstalker hat, like a Sherlock Holmes hat. And then that, uh, his, he's got like little flecks of paint in his beard and on his clothes. And the only thing that's not flecked with paint is his shoes for some reason. But yeah, he's he's about three feet tall. He's sitting. This is a place that m- primarily caters to like humans and elves and like you know people of a taller size. So he's like s- sitting up on like a human, a stool made for humans, with a mug of beer made for humans, just kind of at the end of the bar, like in his what's his his regular seat, and he just like working his way through his mug that he gets every week on this day when he comes in for his art supplies and just chilling out. And there aren't a lot of options here. There's always three things available usually in the drinks and one thing available in the food. Today you have the Shadow Stout. It's a nice brew, kind of maybe darker than you prefer, but roasted barley and it touches something unseen. It's dark and bitter. Like a secret kept too long. Better than your other options, though. You could be having the moonshine mead. <laughs> or rat catcher's red. Either way, made, not the moon. Made from real rats. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Also very successful at warding off pests and unwanted memories. Your food options today. Could you roll a d4 and subtract one? I rolled a one, so zero. There's no food available today. <laughs> Which is... Probably the best outcome one could hope for, because without food available, the smells are much more reduced. You've had the Hunter's Hodgepodge, which is probably the best thing that they have. It's uh, usually a hearty mix of rabbit and mushrooms and uh, mystery. You know, a seasoning with a hint of smoke from forgotten tunnels. You've had the clam chowder. It's uh, rich, infused with briny whispers of undercrofts hidden waterways. You've avoided the artist's mistake successfully, despite its name. That that concoction of leftover vegetables and spilled paints is surprisingly painty, surprisingly tasty, but it also can change your outlook on life quite significantly. As you're sitting there enjoying your beverage, there are two large windows that look out over the alleyway and from this angle where you're sitting they look directly into the building that is mere inches from the building you're in so you don't see much until there's a tiny little bird-like thing that catches your attention because it's making a racket the artist getting his sycophants to fawn over them even more is clearly involved and and distracted and you're the only one who can make out and see this small little bird poking at the window again and again i'm gonna like crawl down from the stool and then just like go over to the window and like look at the bird close more closely as you get closer you see that it is a messenger it is what is usually used to convey messages to you from an old PI that you knew. Well, maybe when you knew them at first, they were less a PI to you, but more of an informant. Informant that skirted the law fairly successfully, had a decent reputation, but back in those days, you didn't view anybody who wasn't part of officialdom as that legit, maybe. I am going to open the window and like hold out my hand for the bird. The little bird comes and lands and as the viewer watches, it lands on your hand. 
and unfolds itself. It is a piece of parchment. The piece of parchment is requesting your immediate help, favor for a favor. And at the bottom you see, I'll owe you big, sticky beak. All right. I'm going to fold that up in a normal way and not like a bird way. Then put it in my pocket. And then I'm going to walk over and <clears throat> crawl back up on the stool. Not like a young man any or a young gnome anymore. So this is getting probably harder to do as time goes on. But I'm just going to grab that mug of beer and be like, go, 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 go. And like finish it and set it down. I'm going to look at the bartender and be like, Ernesto, I need to close my tab. I love it. Hi, hi. From behind Ernesto, you hear a brighter, clearer voice speak up. Oh, Dad, I caught one. And a young girl comes up behind Ernesto holding a spear that has skewered some sort of rodentia. A hunter's hot flush tonight it is. And you know you're escaping before that thing gets cooked. I'm just going to, like, cut some coins out onto the bar and then just in time. And then I'm going to hop down and, like, get my art supplies and pack them into my pack and put my pack on and leave, weaving through the adoring fans of the other guy. Who... And being small as you are, it's pretty easy for you to do. Go ahead and just really quickly, could you roll a dexterity check of your your choice, whatever one you think is the best one for this, just in case you bump into a sycophant? Maybe stealth. Let's try stealth. I don't like to be noticed. So unnoticed. That's a four. Uh, low level characters. As you make your way, trying to get around this crowd, the spectacle of the moment reaches out. Ah! How's it going? I heard you were looking for a nice okra. And they drag you, or they try to drag you, into the center of their circle. Is that like a grapple? <laughs> like, like, how do I resist that? I, if you want to resist it, I would like you to roll a... I guess for you, it could either be... An athletics check, or it could be a. If you if you would like to describe how it would be, you could roll acrobatics check as well. I think as like he reaches out, my goal would be to just like and like duck under his hand, like being already very much shorter than him, hoping that he just. So like a somersault out of the space, sort of thing. That would yeah. be acrobatics. It's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> you somehow roll right into first his lap. not one of the game, isn't it? Yes, it is. The first one. Uh, yeah, you, you, you fall right into his lap somehow. You're not sure how this happened, but you're sitting in his lap. And he goes, ah, oh, buddy. And he kind of hug shakes you. Oh. I was just telling my friends here, and you're now currently grappled. <laughs> In the most awkward way I can imagine. Like a child so, on Santa's lap. You need some extra greens? I, you're always looking for those greens and browns. What can I do for you? I, I, I know that you do your own thing and you just come in here occasionally for the pieces, but you know what? I have just finished this piece and I kind of went purples, all purples and yellows and purples. So I have extra pigments if you would like to, you know, I, I do buy the, 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 the fancier stuff, you know, so if you're feeling a little down, he's an up and coming artist. Yeah. Uh, I suppose if you're, if you don't need them, I, I suppose I could, I could take them from you. Oh, great. You know what, friends, friends, we, I, I need to go. I need to take my friend here. We're going to go back over to my 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 place and we're gonna go get him hooked up with some new pigments how about i actually have to have to be somewhere so how about i just send someone to pick them up from you later so you don't have to leave your friends oh oh that is so kind of you but i would you know and i would like you to roll a charisma persuasion check with your roll so far <laughs> i'm kind of curious <sighs> Yeah, I think this dice is done for today. That's a two, so... The Dunn's chair for that dice. That's a five. <laughs> oh, hell, nothing of it. Nothing of it. We're going to go... Actually, why don't we all go, and we can have drinks at my place? And 
trapped in the crowd, currently grappled, you and this entire crowd make your way downstairs. This is why I door. don't come into town. <sighs> that gives us some information about what's going to happen. All of you are trying to make your way to, well, some of you know that you're trying to make your way somewhere. Larissa, how do you say your character's name? Ulua. <clears throat> Ulua. Ulua. Mm -hmm. Accent on Lu. Closed out her tab and has stepped Ooh. out into the street. How does Ulua usually proceed when asked to do some work? Which work? The side work? Side work side, or the, side the, work? <clears throat> the private work, the non-public work. Well, she she has a bit of a reputation, not a bad one, just uh, notoriety for her day job, we'll call it. And so when she is trying to move around, let me make sure I'm using this word right. It's not the word of the day, but yes, surreptitiously. She tends to, she keeps a little makeup kit in her handbag and she just dresses herself down a little bit she makes sure that her cloak is clasped nice and firmly so that you know her her standard wear isn't necessarily as visible as she moves around and her hair is tucked back underneath the cloak so it's not and she just you know she tries to match the pace of the crowd, so she's not in any particular hurry. She doesn't want to bring attention to her pace. So as she works her way from the Cragside crowds to, our, I'm heading to the theater. You didn't roll successfully on that, Chef. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it would say where. No, it didn't say where. Okay. Your well. stuff is usually very encoded, and in this case, there was a little bit of a problem. Okay, in which case I am going to meander home to confirm with my contact to get further details of exactly where I am supposed to head with this note. I'm not, I, I, I try to move around Craigside crowds very, very low key because that is my respite. I don't, I don't like to bring attention to myself there unless I am working my day job so yes i move i take my time to <laughs> leisurely stroll browsing any open stalls along with the crowds and then i make my way back to the crystal cliffs to my home great so as you're walking through you catch a couple of announcements as you go through the crowds and such hi society gala at grand co towers tomorrow night glitz glamour secrets await read all about it Grand Co's estranged lover spotted with mysterious new companion. Love or espionage? Read all about Grand Stealings. Rival trading families lock horns in heated negotiations. Will the bitter feud continue? Read all about it. Magical artifacts vanish from the museum. Whispers of a thief on the loose. And thus you get your usual news of the day. Do I need to make a news of the day audio now? I was just going to say news of the day. <laughs> uh, the, the, there's a lot of things focused on the grand family right now. It is their season. It is the season when they kind of turn all out. And so you, you definitely are aware that there's going to be a lot of share outs around that individual's life, just like when there are the political shenanigans going on. Interestingly, what's not shared in the news very often is what's going on with the Ascended and mm -hmm. those that are opposed to the Ascended. You mean the real um, conflict? The real oh, news? Yeah. Of course. Why would we have that out in the open? The deep state. <laughs> <laughs> so as you are meandering around, making your way there, you eventually make your way home. You can see that there are not a lot of folks in evidence. It's a night off for a lot of people, but it's also just good to get out. So there's not very many people around, but eventually. That's probably you, why I'm out. You eventually make your way over to your colleague and well, I'll let you describe them, landlord. Yes. 
So my landlord is a, a retiree of my profession. She was one of the first within our profession to elevate it to a higher standard. Having seen what happens to the people in our profession when they age out, as it were, she decided to buy a residence and provide a safe landing space for those people and also people in my profession who aren't necessarily affiliated with a specific group, which includes myself. So she is a human with elven features from the same tribe as one of my parents. And so she is pale, but not deathly so, like Tanzanite's people were rumored to be. Uh, think more like moonlight reflecting off of the surface of a lake with pale blue undertones. And her hair is so such a dark brown that many think it's black unless you see it out in direct sunlight. She's long and lithe in body and limb, and her features could be considered petite if not for her height. And she is almost 100 years old, which is just on the side of mature-ish for a half-elf with plenty of life left to live. Her primary adult years behind her and her golden years in front of her. And her name is... Oksana. And as you come into the sincere house, your home yes. and Oksana's home. And last name. <laughs> yes. And and Oksana sincere, thus the sincere house. Mm -hmm. She's sitting at a little couch. Um, maybe it's not always a couch, but right now she has it arranged such that it's a couch. Oh, you got the message. Yes, had a little trouble with the handwriting. Oh, well, I did re-scroll it because one can never know with one of those young so, people. Where, where am I headed? Oh, oh, I bet his sweaty fingers just smudged that bit. You should be headed to the um, Skylark. Oh, you know... I thought, you know, I misread it. That's my fault. I uh, <laughs> must have had a little bit too much wine this morning. But, well, are you, know. you okay to to go there? Or of course, to... of course. Okay. I just, I, uh, it was such a strange. It, it just. Uh... It's a personal request, and you were personally requested. It's not. It's not the client's typical. Yeah, that's, uh, and we're sure it's credible and not, I mean, I'm familiar. In the usual way, and she gestures, and you can see the unfolded original document, which you can see at a quick glance, since she said the usual way is a origami shape that has been unfolded. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, he hasn't steered us wrong this far, right? I think he's taken a personal joy in your work. Your last your last bit of work gave our friend some notoriety that they have been using quite successfully to expand their business. Well, as long as it's for the good. Satisfied client and for the betterment of our world. Seems like we're on the right track so far. All right. I guess I'll make my way there then. Um since I'm out, going back out, is there anything you want me to pick up? Oh, uh, well, since you are going to the district, to the strip, um, do you remember Ellen's Nut Shop? Yeah. Maybe you could pick up some of my favorites. Okay. How how much are we talking? Like niblets just, or? Just do it as your last thing. You know, I like them hot. Okay. All right. All right. And uh, with that, you're on your way or? Yep. So what it, this gives us is it gives us your arrival order. Serafina, you are first to the Skylark Theater. You were the closest there to begin with. You can see that there is some heavy presence of the watch here, although they don't seem to be all that committed and they're letting people through. At some point, there was a large crowd gathered, but now that crowd has dispersed and you can still see the remnants of the crowd and you can hear whispers of conversation as folks move away from the Skylark Theater. What are some of the whispers saying? Roll a perception check as you're 
trying to listen in? Are you trying to listen in like obviously or are you just are you asking? No, her attention is definitely appears to be like still kind of like messing with that little box. So it looks like she's focused on that, but really she's like, l you know, listening. Okay. So it's eaves eavesdropping. Yeah. Go ahead and roll yeah. that perception check. Perception. Okay. Not great. She's more invested than she thinks she is in her box. <laughs> Seven. We love a box. Yeah, there, 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 There's a little spring that twisting out of control every time you start leaning a little bit towards, you know, as your attention can't wax and wane like that and get the project working successfully. And as you make your way into the theater, having been passed through by the, the, the constables and, and members of the watch that are here, you enter fairly easily, but you don't have much clue about what was being said. You come into the theater space. You may never have been into this particular theater, but it is a fairly large performance venue. The single floor is slightly sloped, and it looks into a stage with a small, narrow orchestra pit. And you can see many members of the orchestra have already packed up their things and have moved out. There is a conductor who is just sweating profusely and, and sitting on the edge of the stage talking to a feathered individual, Sticky Beak, who you recognize. And in front of them, a pool of blood with a large human-shaped smudge amidst it. The body has already been taken away with my past relationship with sticky sticky beard sticky, sticky not beard. beak beak <laughs> <laughs> with sticky beak would i have the type of relationship to go straight up to them or would i know to like wait till they finish the conversation roll an insight check okay kind of like sticky beard now <laughs> that's just because you have one hey Natural 20 plus one. Hey! Pew, 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 pew! <laughs> pew, 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 pew! First uh, that 20 on such a useless roll. <laughs> reading the expressions of a feathered being should be tough, but you've seen this individual a few times, and Sticky Beak is usually put together very well. Sticky Beak is usually calm and insightful and always the first to see through to something. And there is a flattening of the feathers, the rapidness of breath, and you even see that something is clutched in their hand. Sticky Beak doesn't look good. Sticky Beak is normally a rumpled little crow, but in this situation, they look like a stressed out rumpled little crow. You can tell that they don't like being seen in this light and that this is probably a really good time to interrupt. Great. I'm going to go right up, get as close as in between them as I can without getting near the blood and just look to the conductor and say, I so sorry to interrupt. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and look to sticky beard. Be I did it again. Sticky beak. I like beard apparently. And Maybe that's your character. Just... <laughs> it's called sticky beak, sticky beard. Yep. Be like, I got your letter. I uh, wanted wanted to come right away. <laughs> oh, uh, are the others here? Is there anyone else around? That if I look, I did. There's just members of the Skylark Theater troupe um, all milling around, waiting for something. Uh, unless, unless it's uh, them. Uh, I did you invite no, others? No. Oh, yes, I. I need, I, I need a favor. I need a, a really big favor. I, I'm being tasked with something that's in his stress. You can hear this with that insight check. Something that's more important. And he pauses and his pause is a little, his, the gravel of his voice is, is a little bit deeper here. More important than Celeste. Uh, he, he, they should be along shortly. Uh, we, what we have here is a, a bit of a, an investigation, but I'll, I'll, I'll just, let me hold you until the others arrive. And as he's about to say this, I think that Lula 
Kulua. Kulua. You are probably the next to arrive because somebody is being held hostage. As as I walk in the door, I finally lower my hood and unclasp my cloak, take it off, stick it over my arm. And you see a taller but not tall for part of my genetics, like half half of the side of my genetics, half orc, half elf. I lean towards the elven side of my features. I have longer, elongated, pointier ears and a very long face. And I'm short for what could be considered an orc, but I'm right within range of an elf. And my, my skin is a paler green, a little bit with some yellow undertones. And I'm curvy and all the right places and a little <laughs> extra so in all of those places which it it lends more to my orcish genetics but yes and i'm dressed in red silks and gold satins and so very luxurious but a simplified design and i'm going to kind of stroll down I, is so on the stage is where the you see where everyone beak, is okay a conductor Serafina okay and I would like to say that I'm probably very familiar with this theater because I probably performed here as the in the earlier parts of my career and so I'm going to walk down the side aisle to where I know the proscenium uh side step is onto the stage and just Still taking my time, uh, reminiscing a little about some of my favorite performances. And as we get to the stage, that's when I'm going to notice the pool of blood. And I'm going to say, um, what are you? Sh uh, am I in the right place? Giving like a quizzical Sticky look to Sticky looking Beak. looking at you and I'm asking for a personal favor here. I will owe you. I will owe you big, but can't leave her, and I have to leave her. And he leans closer to you and whispers, it's only you and Serafina here. Who? There are counselors who would have this swept under the rug, but, and he gestures towards the puddle of, of congealed blood. I see. She was my nightingale. I am going to reach out just gently to kind of caress the side of his neck where at a common calming spot for Kenku. Not, not overtly any particular emotion, but just as like a, as a friendship gesture, like I understand my condolences. Like I, it actions more than words at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I dig that. Can you roll a... Animal handling check. <laughs> that is not okay. Can you roll a charisma check? I would say persuasion, but you can... Let's see. Charisma, right? Persuasion, okay. In the dark. 15? I haven't rolled a double digit yet so far, except for my very first roll. You can see some of the attention leaves, but almost immediately it picks back up in his posture and, and feathering. And just then we have the last member of our group. Uh, you've, you had to apply those skills that you learned as an investigator. They may have been a little bit rusty. The but, skills I learned as an investigator to find the bathroom and crawl out the window. Um, and it helps that they that this particular individual was in a sub-basement level. So it was easy to crawl out into the basement embrasure and then climb up and make your way out. Easy, except if you're three foot four. But, you know. You've arrived, and you, you... How do you enter, or is there anything you're looking for? I'm going to... There was nothing in the note about why, right? Just no. come here? Okay. So, yeah, I'll just walk in, and then I'm going to, like, survey the scene from the entrance to see what I can see. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. 13. You can see that members of the theater company are the only ones left. There is a knot of three members of the watch... 
no one that you know personally, but you would know them by sight and reputation. And you have a feeling they would know you as well. Go ahead and roll an insight check if you would like to know more about your relationship with them. But if you're fine without that, you can ignore. Uh, 16. They, they were associated with someone in your past who you, you definitely see them as being in the pocket of others. Whether they are or not may not be true, but your suspicions lean that way. And then I see Sticky Beak down yes. by the stage with the... Mr. and all that. Okay. So I will kind of eyeball the watch members and then just like walking with my staff like down to the stage. Yeah, all three of you are gathered now and Sticky Beak is, is stands up as he sees you three. He's like, I, 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 need, I need your help. And I think the three of you have what is needed to do this. It is going to, I will personal favor. Could I see I the will... blood and stuff when I was coming in? Like, yeah, you I... see the blood on the stage. I'm just gonna look at him and be like, I would ask if you're staying out of trouble, but and just like <laughs> gesture to the pool of blood. Well, not my trouble, but let me tell you the story. And Sticky Beak proceeds to share the story of what has occurred this night. The spotlights. Once her celestial halo now glared down like vengeful eyes, Celeste Nightingale, Skylark Theater's brightest songbird, lay crumpled in the orchestra pit. A tragic aria silenced mid-note. Her scarlet gown, usually a torrent of passion, pooled limply around her stains, not with stage makeup, but with a deeper, more final crimson. A ripple of gasps, muffled by sequin and champagne foam, echoed through the theater's velvet-trimmed maw. Above, the diamond-dusted chandelier quivered, casting fractured diamonds onto the scene. The conductor, his baton frozen mid-swing, resembled a petrified maestro conducting a symphony of shock. Sticky beak perched on the edge of their seat like a rumpled crow, surveyed the tableau with beady, calculating eyes. The air hung heavy with the scent of fear and stale gin, punctuated by the discordant hum of overturned sheet music and the frantic rustle of silk skirts. Sticky Beak ruffled their feathers, a nervous habit, and hopped down from the chair and up onto the stage. The floorboards creaked under their weight, a mournful counterpoint to the orchestra's stunned silence, edging closer to Celeste. Her alabaster stage marred by a single cruel slash of crimson across her throat. The fortune cookie, which Sticky Beak holds out to you as he relays the story, lay clutched in her porcelain hand, a cruel symbol of fate's fickle finger. Its message, the highest note shall sing no more. It seemed to mock the gilded tragedy before him. Sticky Beak tapped it with their beak. A sardonic, sardonic grin twisting their feathered face. Well, Canary, it seems you sang your swung song a little early tonight. Who gets to write the curtain call of this little opera of death? Glancing around, taking in the petrified audience, the whispering cast huddled in the wings, and the single be bead of sweat trickling down the conductor's temple, a shiver ran down Sticky Beak's spine. A tingle of excitement amidst the grim tableau. This was a mystery with enough twists and turns to make a feather-brained bird likes to keep it dizzy. The show, it seemed, was just getting started. As Sticky Beak relates the story to you about what occurred that night while Sticky Beak was out for entertainment like many m members of the community of Overton were, they then go on to explain that the watch had come and requested Sticky Beak's work in a different area of the city and on a different case. And Sticky Beak relates to the three of you that they're very concerned because it, and this is with a glance towards those members of the watch who are still in the room, very few for a murder. They just want this swept under the rug. Can you help, please? I'm being torn in two different directions. My, and he nods to you, Ua, between my new notoriety 
and what I have in my heart. And he nods to the pool of blood. I understand. Let me check. Let me take a look around and just see if I notice anything from some of the more secluded viewing points. I hate I hate to ask, but the the wound just suddenly appeared. There was no From my seat, that's all I saw. Hmm. I honestly didn't see it until she lay at the bottom of the orchestra pit. You can see where she collapsed first and then rolled. I'm and going to sorry. <clears throat> as he points, you can see that there's the the pool of blood that it's been very obvious, but then there's another shallower pool of blood. I'm going to go up to what I assume there are probably some box seats or at least at, I would like to check those out. And I would also like to check the, I can't remember what they're called. If there's anything across the top box, across the top. Yeah. Great. So you're kind of casing the overall space. Um, yeah, just looking for anything that may have been disturbed as someone left in a hurry or as I reach each spot, kind of seeing the vantage point and seeing, you know, how much of the audience I can see from that spot, whether I'm visible or, you know, I'm assuming Sticky Peak probably indicated where his seat was. So I'm going to see if I can see that. Just yeah, to... Sticky Peak was front row, Joe, in it. Yeah. Close to the orchestra pit as they could be. Go ahead and, and roll an investigation check. I'll come back to you because it's going to take you a while to kind of like navigate. <laughs> investigation. <laughs> It'll take you a moment to navigate the space. <laughs> Gus or Serafina, either of you have any immediate reactions, questions, things you're trying to do? I'm going to go into the mode of my previous job. And <clears throat> I'm going to say I need the names of all audience members cast crew anybody that was here i need history as much as you can give me on the victim and i need to look around has this area been cordoned off are people coming and going who's has the scene been disturbed is this exactly how it was sticky beak nods jesus i have to go the conductor here Graham is trusted. He has the most to lose by this. He can fill you in, but I can tell you this, and he's whispering this now to you. This wasn't handled properly. The watch showed up and then left. Kind of say back to him quietly, like, given who remains from the watch, I'm hardly surprised. Council Stooges and Ascendant followers. Was the conductor's name Bram? Like Graham. Graham. Like Graham. candy Graham. Serafina. And Sticky Beak looks like For my brain, being ready to leave. For my brain, you had said that there was like a slash to her throat. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. The body is not here, but that's yeah. what was described to you through the storytelling. Perfect. Just as Sticky Beak is leaving, I'll just say, go where they're telling you to go. We will... We'll, we'll, we'll look here and we'll be in touch. If we could... Uh... And he kind of glances again over at the members of the watch that are there. We can meet at your brother's office when you have more news. You, you and you and me, or to th those people as well. Trust them; they're good at what they do. What do they do? do? What your brother did. And he hands you three <gasps> sheets of paper. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. And you know these three <laughs> these you. sheets of paper are the type that can be folded into a flying shape of some sort and go to whoever you whisper to them before tossing them like a paper airplane. Yep, yep. I definitely remember how to fold these. Yep, not a problem at all. We got this. I know what I'm doing. I owe the three of you. And Where? he kind of looks up, uh, like at this point, Ulu has, uh, like, has like gone up one of the gantries and is checking things out. I trust you all and thank you. And he walks up the passageway between the seats. And as he walks up, the three members of the watch nod to him and turn and follow him out, leaving behind the space to you all, which 
back in your day, day Gus, should never have happened. I'm guessing you, you, you redirect your questions to the orchestral director. Yeah, I'll go over to him and be like, "Where's who took the body?" The the watch people, the the. It's all happened so fast. I I was talking to a, a lieutenant or something, and then I turned around and and she was gone. Do you know this lieutenant's name? Uh, lieutenant. Oh, what are we gonna do? There's no way we could work out. Oh my God, Celeste. I think it was Jill, Jane, Jane, Jill. Sorry, this is not good. This is not good. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I understand this is a difficult time for you. Um, uh, well, I mean. Please, it's important to get as many details as we can while things uh, are still fresh. So please look at me. Yeah, yes, please yes. Take, please take a deep breath. Count to five. Okay. Breath in, count to five. Let it out. <gasps> One, two, three, four, five, and breathe out. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh. uh Celeste was was about to do her her her, her aria, and um, uh, there was a flash of something. It was out of the corner of my eye. I was I was focused on the pit, and then and then she was in the pit, and then and then. There was, everybody screamed, yells, uh, um, the, the feathered fellow, he, he came up, uh, 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 and then, and then, and then it, it, the, the, the theater was, there was yelling, screaming, and then the theater was empty, and then, and then I was, I just sat there and I watched him, he, he, he picked out the, 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 the cookie and he gestures to the cookie that has been left where Sticky Beak was standing. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I called for the stage manager. Couldn't find the stage manager. I couldn't find the stage manager. The stage manager should have been able to hand, should have, like, we, we should have kept the people here. And then uh, uh, I, I sent one of the, one of the, the runners to, to find the watch. And, and then, then they came. And then uh, Councilman, uh, oh, I don't know the council. The councilman came in and, and said a couple of words to one of the watch members. The lieutenant was talking to me, and then and oh, then hold on. Uh, which which council member? I I don't know. I I don't. I, why would why would council members come here? Why would they be here? Why would they? What they? Who is uh, Celeste? Do you know about her family, her friends, her associations? Oh, Celeste, Celeste, I mean, we're her family. We're, 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 before we came here, I mean, we've had a good run. We've had uh, five, six years here. We, we've, we've become like, we, we, we are the Skylark. And this is that she was the Skylark. She was the nightingale of the Skylark. Um, uh, and, and, and now, I mean, we came from, from, um, gosh, it's been so many years. We, we were traveling. We were doing shows on the road. I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, as uh, uh, the Graham, right? I'm assuming this isn't necessarily a quiet exchange. It's now that there's nobody here, he's speaking up a little bit more loudly. There are other there are other members of the cast and everything. He's not speaking loudly enough for them to hear. Okay. And it, since you're up in the higher spaces, you might catch whispers of what he's saying, but he's not being. And it is a theater space, so there is a bit of projection can that I, happens. Can I just but... tell if he's upset? Visibly upset. Okay. No role. Am I within 60 feet? Yes. Okay. I would like to past calm emotions but i want to center the point to where essentially he's at the edge of it and the person the gnome he's speaking to is not included in the circle but as much of the rest of the orchestra are as well just to yeah make things a little easier for everyone and i'm just as i as i after i cast it i'm just going to kind of sweetly call out just just stay calm everyone we will each be with you shortly we want to hear everything you have to share with us please have a seat 
and and know that we're going to take care of all of this. As he calms down, and it's kind of an abrupt change, Gus. She says that, and then he's just visibly calmed more, more so than your breathing techniques did at that moment. Like, and you, with your history, probably are aware of some of the ways this could have been done. Mm-hmm. But as he takes a moment, he's okay. So, so uh, the council shouldn't have been here. There's no reason for them to have been here. And then, unless they want, they have been after us. They've, they've. We've been after you in what way? Speaking truth to power isn't always the brightest move, uh, but we thought we were being a little bit more cryptic than this. Um, they, if the message silencing, of your show is not our show, so to speak, but um, we we have members who go below and as he says below um his eyes drop down but in the way that most people in overton know to mean underton and we also work down there um some of us a small group of us what do you do down there exactly roll a persuasion check with disadvantage, it's not looking good. Seven. We perform for those in 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 in, in need of a good time. Um, and uh, that message that that's one of the songs from Celeste's repertoire. Well, it's not a song; it's a it's a lyric. I'm lyric. gonna turn to Seraphine and I'll be like, "Could you get that cookie and message and just put them somewhere safe?" Yep, yep, definitely can do that. Plenty of pockets I have. Yeah. Serafina collects the evidence. Um, While I'm grabbing that, can I also get a little, just like sample of the blood? Yeah. Looked a vial of that. I'm sure you, of all people, have a vial on your person. Yes. It's always those interesting Um, little bits and pieces for your work. Yeah. So yeah, collect that, put it somewhere safe in one of my very many pockets. Like the vial. I also oh. want to look around to see if there's any animals, like little, little mice, rats, as well. And that's all I want to yep. do at the moment. Roll a perception check. Perception. Uh-huh. Ooh. Twenty-two. Uh, you see a prop table. And on the prop table, you see what looks like a mouse in a cage. All right. And as you walk over to that prop table, what I can say to you is that you get there and there is a prop missing. As prop tables Ooh. often are, it is well labeled. And there is a dagger missing. Dagger is missing. Very good. <laughs> Told you I knew what I was doing. If she goes over to the mouse, I would like to cast Detect Magic. As you cast Detect Magic, how? what is the range on your Detect Magic? Five miles. No, 30 feet. If only. It covers the stage, a bit of the backstage area, and there's a glow all about you, as you're used to living in this town. There's always a glow. Out in... Your home area, there wouldn't be as much of a glow, but you're used to the city glow. And as you l- release the spell, can you describe to me what that looks like? Yeah, actually, for me, I am going to grab my staff and unscrew the magnifying glass, and then I will cast detect magic, but like through the magnifying glass, like where I look, that's where I see. Okay. So yeah, in this thirty foot space as you peer through you can see many of the props are aglow with magic the stage itself is aglow with magic there's another glow up above ulua Uh, can you roll in your investigation check if you haven't already i did it was a 15 as a 15 okay great 
you found a few things as you've gone through Ulua. You've found a ledger and it was kind of tucked up at the gantry area. And it's, you can see that there's a name written on the outside of it. And as you see Gus's eyes go to something that Gus sees, you also, following his line of sight, see the object. And it is a dagger that both of you are seeing. Gus, you can see that this dagger is wrapped in illusion magic. So what's the, can I look at the ledger to see what the name is? <laughs> yeah, as you as you look on the outside of the ledger, you see simply written on the top of it, Grunden, stage Grunden. manager. Got it. As As I follow the gnome's line of sight, I am going to say just, you know, slightly elevated voice, but not shouting as to alarm anyone. I, I think I see what you're seeing. Shall I retrieve it? Yes, please be careful not to leave your fingerprints or otherwise magic auras, such and such on it, if you can. Well, I don't know about the second part, but... The first I can certainly manage. I have silks to spare. You did. You did. You did. I don't see what y'all are seeing, but I, I do have a lot of gloves if you if you need some gloves. Um I and I pull out just like a random strip of silk. I mean like I I I should be alright, but if I run out I will certainly let you know. Thank you. Okay. okay. And I'm not saying that, like, condescendingly. I, I, I'm being earnest. I will take some gloves if you have to spare. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I look at the rat, the mouse, I go, I'm coming back for you. And I'm going <laughs> to run and give him some gloves. Do they fit? I have, I have bigger, or I guess smaller ones? Uh, Do you need are, smaller ones? Is that rude? These, these are these are. Do fun. they fit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is that rude? <laughs> as, as she goes to talk to the mouse and she gets the dagger, like, I'm going to just, like, Take some time to think if there's anything else you feel like we should know. I'm going to look around the, the sheen. And I'm just going to, like, take the magnifying glass and, like, kind of look around the blood pool and, like, on the stage. And just, as, <laughs> doing other stuff. as you walk around, he continues to follow you and share with you that this, this calm effect that's hit him has, like, left him in a space where he's really trying to share as much as he can. And he, he, he just said, well, you know, we're, we're a tight-knit group. But, you know, just like any tight-knit group, we have our problems. I mean, there's... There's some jealousy for, for the spotlight. And then we, we have a costume designer. She has a gambling debt and she really likes her poisoned embroidery. So, I mean, that the neck thing, that makes me, I don't, I don't know, but I really don't want to cast aspersions on her. And then we, of course we have the, 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 the backup singers. They're, they're just, I mean, the, 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 well, and he kind of just keeps verbal vomiting all the little bits and pieces and secrets of the Ooh. troop. Who oh, does she dear. owe? Who did Celeste owe for her gambling debts? No, 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 not Celeste. The costume designer has oh, some gambling debts. Oh and and she, because I mean, it's the neck thing, right? And she has a, a thing for, she has a penchant for poison jewelry and, and embroidery. And he, he keeps just spinning his wheels and sharing all these, like, Details about the other members of the troop. Okay. Does he say anything about, like, somebody who would be, like, jealous, would want the lead role? But yeah, he does. He shares several of, like, pretty much every single name of a female singer. He comes up with some reason why they might be jealous. Um, could you write down their names and how to contact them for us? And oh, also... yeah, yes, yes. I mean, we all live here, uh, so that's how to contact us, but... um. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I might live with a killer. Do you know if any of those people have connections to people on the council, to those, to the council's children, to siblings? I mean, we're not. But they from might be. Here. The only they person might be dating who's... or otherwise engaged. No, 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 no. None of our. I mean, we're all from outside the city originally. I mean, I guess people could have made friends, but. Uh, the only people who are locals are like the stagehands and our manager. 
Is she? What's the stage manager's name? Uh, Grund. I mean, I think he's got some sort of ascended uncle or something like that. They own the building. That's the why he has the, the job. Nepotism in this business in town. Not surprising. The way you gathered the dagger. Are you and still the... looking through the the ledger? I was going. So, is it large? Is it something I can it's... pick up and carry with me? Oh yeah, it's totally yeah. Okay, I'm going it's to slightly bigger than a small folio. It's a okay. dagger, but it's like Thor's hammer. You cannot pick it up. No, not the oh. dagger, the ledger. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> oh, <this> dagger. <laughs> Whosoever picks hurt. up this book shall gain the powers of Thor. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to, as I, I have the ledger in one arm, I've wrapped my hand in silk and used it to pick up the dagger. And I'm just kind of holding it like gingerly, mm -hmm. but firmly in order. And I'm so as to not try to impress any of my natural presence on it and i'm going to make my way down back to the gnome and i'm just going to hold out the dagger and 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 say here 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 you are uh my name is gushunen schniffel uh you can call me gush take it thank you god ulua nice to meet you likewise i found this above and it belongs to the stage manager i think he might be worth speaking to i tend to have a way with people but if you want to accompany me i'm i'm more than happy to speak to him together yes i think i think that's a good idea based on what the maestro here has been telling me okay and the the other where I heard her off her gloves, but I don't see where she went after that. She's by the prop table. As you both turn towards the prop table, take a moment to pause there. Serafina, you're mess. with the rat. What are you doing? I wanted to... I gotta remember how, to, how it actually works. So let me see. How um, to play D&D. &D. Let's see. The fun thing is everybody's too, rolled know. back from <laughs> level 20 characters to these low level characters. And it's like the joy of a new character plus the, oh, yeah. I can't do that yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe a 12 is still good now. <laughs> yeah. So, so as I was saying before, uh, Serafina has a lot of horns. So to explain them a little bit more. There's two little ones like right here. She has two that are about here that spiral. So they like, you know, but they go like back and up a little. The one on her right is broken at the tip. And then the last one is sort of from like, kind of like headphones. They kind of like start here and they wrap around and they stop about here-ish. And they're all covered in like little dangly bits and jewels and you know, they're all prettified, as well as her hair is just all tangled up in it as well. But one of the gems that she has has a little rune on it. And I grab it and I touch it so that I can speak with the mouse rat. Mouse rat for speak with animals. You can't speak with animals. And but... I, I like... I go on the table like this, and I go, hello. Oh, shit. Oh. Is that you? Hi. That's me. You speak rat? For right now. Holy shit. Oh. You have a fun vocabulary. Fucking yeah. A rat. Oh. I mean, I got a good gig here, so I'm not really going to spoil it. So if I need to stop cussing, I'll stop cussing. I didn't realize you could speak. No, no, so no, no. You can. You totally can. What I fucking should do and shouldn't and shit. Nope. Damn. You like it here? You like it here? Oh yeah, bitch. That's great. They treat you well. Oh fucking! Look at this. Uh, fresh shavings, food. Eh, who couldn't fucking love it? Uh, the bath? Not so much a fan of, but hey, 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 hey. I've well, you can't smell that. Hey, uh, well, since you're doing great, you know, I'll, I'll let you stay. I'll let you be. Um. You didn't by any chance, like, 
see see anything weird, see anyone cuz you're always here on the prop table, right? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. And I know and I know that uh people when they do this type of things, you know, they kind of have a set way of doing it. They do it the same way every time. Oh yeah. Was anything oh, yeah. different this time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that bitch, she picked up her uh, fortune cookie early. Uh, I don't think she usually fucking has that thing in her hand, but I think uh, somebody put it in her hand and she just like fucking like looked at it and was like, oh shit, yeah, whatever. And then um, that thing, and she, he kind of like with his little mousy nose, he points to the empty space where there is a dagger. Yeah, I don't know why anybody keeps around a, a rat encrusted dagger like that shit. That Those fuckers are dangerous. You know? So the the fortune cookie it's 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 a prop. No 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 it's her cookie. She sings the thing and it tells her. Well, anyways, if you sing it right like she does, it tells you shit. The cookie tells you stuff. Yeah, she always wants to know how she did, so she always sings you know that song during it, and then the cookie apparently fucking whispers in her ear or some fucking shit. I don't know what the hell she does. Anyways, sings her song and then like. I think in the performance, she either, like, glows or she fucking looks like she's pissed off and she just died. I don't know. Some dumbass piece of human uh. majory shit. Ah, uh, right, right, yeah. Of course, majory shit. Ugh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it's... But did you see that fucking dagger that they had? I don't know where the fuck that shit thing is, but my god, damn it. That, that thing is dangerous. Well, why, why, other than the fact that it's sharp? Is there extra stuff to it? Oh, it's written in rat nobody writes shit in rat that's a terrible idea you don't write shit in rat no rats don't write shit in rat wait can you read rat well i'm a fucking rat duh well i don't want to assume that you can read you know i you think i'm illiterate you <laughs> fucking tall things you're always <laughs> i, I am on the small things i am just because i, I am. live in the sewers well not now I, I guess i live in the penthouse now so maybe i'm a fucking tall thing now oh shit i'm sorry oh, that that I'm, was very I rude might, of me i might be oh bah, mother bah, please shit. i'm so oh, sorry i should have assumed anything please please breathe i might have a snack do you want a snack thanks i want to pick the cage up and i'm going to bring it over to everyone and i'll be like this rat the, the the dagger you found the dagger has rat on it and he can he can read it but um he fainted because i was rude and uh assumed things i shouldn't have assumed seraphine anyone you hear fix it <laughs> you hear whisper oh fuck i don't think she believes i fainted she fucking brought me over to these fuckers oh shit oh shit oh shit oh you're not you're not oh hi hi no, I'm dead. Hi. Dead. Die. No. You killed me. Murder. No. You're a very Murder good speech. actor. I see why I see why they hired you to I be a part of their show. The rat is playing possum. Uh yeah, yeah, he is. Um <laughs> I'm not a fucking possum. You tell that fucking little giant monster of a fucker. I am okay. a rat. I am a distinguished he, member of the rat dynasty. That little bitch. Rat died. He says that you're a bitch and that he is a rat, not a possum, and he's a very distinguished rat from the rat. Rat Dynasty, Mr. Rat? I don't know. I'm fucking making shit up as I fucking do. I'm a He's rat. certainly not making shit up as he goes. God damn right. I like you. Well, you um, my bitch. Oh. Very well. Is your that good? I don't know. Ratty Highness. Sir. Um, what does the dagger say exactly? Do you mind do you mind reading it and then I can let them know what it says? Because I I assume you two don't read rat. I don't read rat. You don't read rat, you speak rat? Are you illiterate? Were you I am. making fun I of am. me because you I am. the one who's fucking illiterate? Ugh. Yes. Typical. I put my own issues onto you, and I do apologize. Will you help Typical. us, please? You're as bad as that stage manager? Mother. What's wrong with the stage manager? Nothing. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And Lua's ears pick what? up. <laughs> but what? No, I, I thought I was your bitch. I mean, you are, you're my bitch, but like... The dude cut the tail off the last one with my job. I ain't fucking touching this shit. Well, I I'll won't let the, him I'll cut your, your tail dagger, off. That's it. I'm reading your dagger. That's it. Okay. 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 Read the dagger. And then I lean over to them and I'm like, there's something wrong with that stage manager. He says. His little it nose twitches. The common thread. There's also something fucking wrong with the costume designer. You know, she tried to embroider something for me. I'm a freaking rat. What the hell is it? And that says, uh, with... 
Can you turn it a little bit to the side? Hey, short hey. bitch. Short, uh, short bitch. bitch. Short bitch. I think turn that's you. Way. I'm sorry. I'm just translating. He sure. He's asking sure. you to turn it. God damn it. These people are idiots. Why is he spinning around? How's that? You're making me sick, you dumbass. Stop dumb spinning ass. it, he says. You're going to make him sick. Right. And then a mean uh, word. Oh, turn it slower. It's a... Like, all right, all right, okay, yeah. Oh, it's like a. It, 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 I want that dagger. Well, I can't hold it, but like it's a, it's a dagger to turn you invisible. Is it, is it like a spell that you say so that you can become that, or? Uh, is it directions? Is it? You know, rat is not exactly the foremost of complex languages, so mm -hmm. um, it's just. So it's some fuckery about uh, you hold it, huh? I sneak around, and then when you sneak around, it knows your intent, and then it whoosh, you're 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 invisible. Okay. Um. And I'm gonna hand the rat. Uh, excuse me. A uh, very pretty lady. Um. Can can you Aww. hold the cage for a moment? Oh, you're gonna put my hand. Me and that. Uh -huh. She's uh, pretty. Just for a second, because I want to see. She's not pretty. Look at her. Where's he her? He thinks feather? you're very pretty, just like I do. Can you hold him? Of course. Would um, I have some very, very well aged cheese for a snack? Would you like any? Hey, he has cheese. You, she has cheese. You want it? Cheese, cheap and good. Yeah. Bring it. Okay. okay. Yeah. He, he'd like it. Okay. Um, I always like to keep snacks handy. Everybody loves a snack. Okay. Um, I can I see the a dagger? Okay. Her. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the dagger and I'm gonna sneak, 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 sneak. Do like a sneak. <laughs> Try to like sneak around everyone so that they can't see me and see if I can become invisible. Because I haven't said check. that it does invisible yet. I just roll, roll a stealth check. I can do that. I'm very stealthy. That's not a d20. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Was it a d12? I don't know what it was. <laughs> okay. Stealth. The dodecahedron of random. Mm, okay. Plus three, so 18. 18. Uh, you utilizing your abilities, getting around things, and, and being a little bit able yeah. to, to... Thinking of my brother. Channeling your brother. What is your intent while you're trying to sneak? My intent is to sneak up on the the... Are you a gnome, Jason? To sneak up on the gnome and and poke him in the back. Hopefully not with the dagger. <laughs> not with the dagger. As you sneak up on the gnome to poke him in the back, you feel the dagger start to feed from your intent, but then you feel it halt and you do not turn invisible. And you hear a voice in your head say, no blood, no love. And that was in my head. Can I think in my head? Where else do you think? Um, <laughs> is it is it my blood, or can I'm gonna take the vial of blood that I had and put a tiny little drop of blood on the on the dagger? You know, I probably have like a squeezy like yeah a dropper. You have a little pipette. You're putting it. Yeah. Move. Nothing happens. Just watching her like crouching and sneaking around oh, oh. putting blood on the dagger like oh oh it's gonna be really cool just give me one more second and then i'm going to spells cast something which is identify at the first level awesome you cast identify and you find out that this dagger used in one murder is currently sated but is a dagger of murder when the intent is to murder it will hide the wielder <gasps> until the deed is accomplished and the murderer has escaped. <sighs> but the intent I has go, to be to murder. Oh my gosh, I go and I give it back to uh, the gnome. I go, thank you very much. You can have that back, kind sir. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'll take my friend back from you, pretty lady. Did oh. you? Did you discover anything? Uh, oh, there... yes. Sorry. I've been doing this by myself a lot lately. Got to tell you. Okay. Sorry. I, I right. fully understand. Okay. So... This is, I'm not usually a, a, a group project uh, person. Well, I'm used to doing it with network. people, a person, but it's been a while. Anyways, um, that's a, that's a 
dagger of murder. So um, if your intent when you're holding it is to kill, um, it's going to make you invisible until you have done the deed and gotten away. That's what that is. Well, that's I'll oddly specific. And... How, how the murder was committed. Uh, I'm going to like wrap this thing up real good and like put it in my bag. I'm going to just kind of saunter, but not like in a overtly sexual way. Just that, that's kind of my natural walk uh, over. Just yes. Shake your ass. Um, no, just, just, um, just think saunter. Like, no, think, think like um, Victor in uh, Miss Congeniality. Look at me. I'm floating. Uh, like, yeah. You sashay away. <laughs> no, sashay is different. Sashay is definitely more hippie. I'm going to walk over, approach the conductor, and say, I noticed there's, an, and, and they mentioned a, a stage manager. Grundon, is he here? I haven't been able to find him. Where I, He should be here. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to get shut down. The council's going to take us out. I'm I'm sure they No, I'm sure that's not that's not going to happen. Does he live around here? Is there um, a, 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 somewhere that he's most likely to be if we want to find him to see if he saw anything? Yeah, I, I'm sure he he's he's I mean, he's part of the community. I, I think he actually doesn't live here he lives between here and the council the hollow council buildings sublets or or has a room with one of those bigger houses over that direction all right do you happen to have an address yeah yeah it's uh, lord of the inquiry's house i'm assuming you know where that is because they don't do addresses so much at that residence area correct not that i'm aware of this has been very helpful thank you and as one performer to another, I can assure you that our kind always bounce back. And even if you don't perform here, there will always be a place to perform. And if you well, need a space to, you know, maybe for a temporary performance, maybe for in between shows to promote your next project, you should certainly check out Cecilia's or Celia's spirits and sundries in, what is it, Cragside Crowds? I can never remember how to Cragside say it. Crowds. Yes. Cragside Crowds. She's always, Crowds. She, she always opens up her stage to, to anyone looking to promote their art. So she's, you just let her know Lua sent you and she'll get yeah. you set up. Yeah. Well, 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 I got to figure out this whole, this whole thing is put us all out of sorts. So uh, we'll figure it out. Um, I, I got to, I guess I gotta of course. And reassure the cast. So, uh, if you need me, I'm, I'll be here. I mean, where else would we go? Thank you for everything, Graham. You've been extremely helpful. And she just kind of like, a, kind of like, just under the chin, kind of like reassuring. Do I know uh, her from somewhere? He kind as of... he starts to leave, can I uh, be like, oh, the, uh, the rat? You can't just leave him here by himself. You don't want to be left here, do you? Uh, he kind of turns to look at you for a moment. Just put him back in his cage. And then you hear the rat go, I mean, are, th are they going out of business here? Are they Are they dead? Are they failing? Is this bullshit No, no, over? I just don't know if, do you just live on the prop table? Is that where you just stay? Well, yeah. I mean, unless they make him oh. take a bath and that shit sucks. So. Oh, you know. okay. My bad. Okay. I'll, I'll just put you back on the prop table then. I'm going to go put him back on the prop table. He's got I just didn't want you to leave him chunk of your um, cheese and he's like been sniffing it but not eating it just eyeing you warily as as she goes to put him back i'm just gonna say um before before we leave uh you said he mentioned something about the stage manager it is there anything else that he has to share or that he thinks we should know I think he's next. Right, right, he right. might be next on our list to visit. To go talk to. Uh, do you have a name, little friend? No. Not little. I mean, you're just littler to me. I didn't mean like yeah, you're small. Yeah, yeah. Big people, small problems, whatever. No, I don't have a name. I'm a rat. You don't, we have, don't a have a name? Do you no. want a name? No. How do I address you? My God. My God. Okay, got it. So, my God, uh, you had mentioned that... <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> He's laughing at me. I'm not really sure why. Okay, um, so, my God, he, uh, you said that, you said that the stage manager, that he was mean or something? Yeah, yeah, he's mean. He's nasty, nasty old Why? asshole. Why? I don't know, whatever. People, people are always mean. They don't like rats. They my God, you have to tell me. <laughs> it's, it's all good, it's all good. Oh, man. Uh, I'm a rat bastard. Um. Not totally sure what that means, but um, I'd love to hear more about the ma the sage manager. Is he mean you hear, to you? You just hear cheeps of a rat. Dang it! I can't talk to him anymore. Oh, um, maybe... I mean, we could come back and visit him. But Well, if they end up moving house, we may not know where he ends up. Do you think we could borrow... Him? I, Maybe? I mean, he's a prop. You can't remove a prop from a prop table. I mean, I know I just did, but like I brought it back. I don't. I don't think the show will be going on without its star. So. I mean, I I would certainly like to ask permission. I wouldn't do so without. Oh yeah, I mean, we could go ask. Who's I mean, go he ask likes it here. I'll just have whoever it is roll a persuasion check. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy to. I, I I understand that you know, working in the stage, that normally it's the stage manager in charge of the props. But since he's not here, I, I'm assuming the conductor may be the next in line in terms of seniority hierarchy. I, uh, I don't. I go really. you, you said you are in this world. You'd know more than I do. I I um, just know I'm it's a prop table. I'm just going to um, I'm going to. Can I just borrow just quickly? Cause Borrow, borrow what? What do you want? Oh, him? Yeah, uh, yes. yeah, yeah. He's in the cage. You go for it. You don't like the cheat? Um, uh, I, I can maybe try to find a different one. That's that's just my favorite. But you know, everyone's tastes differ. And I just kind of gingerly walk over uh, back to Graham and I go, "I'm so sorry to bother you. I I know you have a million things on your mind. I just have one more question. It seems, uh, your your prop rat." Uh, may have some more useful information for us. And I know that sounds uh, silly, but every being has eyes and a memory and 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 can speak in their own way. And so... You want uh, would to it... borrow the rat? Uh, yes. I, we just... Roll a persuasion we don't... check. Dim lighting. 19? Oh. He's... oh. Take, take the rat. Take the rat. Your rat now. All okay. right. Uh, folks, let's gather together. And he's just, he's off getting his group together and trying to figure out a way to do, debrief the whole situation that's occurred. Only question I have is when I was looking around the blood and stuff, was there any footprints or like anything like leading away? Roll an investigation check. Good thought. It's going to be said a lot in this Eleven. movie. <laughs> There's a lot of disturbance around here between failed investigators being here, um, the various people who who ran about right after things. It, there's a lot of different disturbances to the blood. None of them are particularly noteworthy or clear, but you can see that there have been several footprints through the blood, but those all happened after the blood fell. Can I um, roll an insight check to see if I feel like maybe it was intentionally obfuscated by like the guards? Go ahead them? and roll that insight check to see if there's any intent behind yeah, these movements. What's that? Eleven. Eleven. It's difficult to tell. Um, Eleven. It could have been. <laughs> it also could have just been the natural situation of this really badly botched investigation. Skull. With that, we are going to stop. No! We'll come back to you next week with yes. the epic conclusion <laughs> of this foul aria. Hope you find your pod and bye bye. Bye. Oh, okay, bye. bye. bye.